Come on, send forth your praise. Hallelujah. He's been so, so good. Look at somebody and say, he's been so, so good. Brought me out time after time. He's been so, so good. Changed my life. He's been so, so good. Healed my body. He's been so, so good. Regulated my mind. He's been so, so good. Mended my broken heart. He's just been so, so good. Look at somebody and say, he's just been so, so good. I can't thank him for everything, but I'm so going to give him my best. Come on, tell him thank you this morning.
Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Truly, we just thank God for another day. I'd like to welcome you to Grace and Mercy Temple Ministry Wednesday night Bible study. I'm Pastor Thomas Brown, and we're so excited and glad to have you on tonight. Amen. Truly, God is worthy to be praised, and we're just grateful to God for another day. He has blessed us to see only because of God's grace and his mercy that we are here on today, and for that we're grateful. Please join me as we go before the Lord in prayer. Eternal and gracious Father, we thank you once again for another day. You have blessed us to see, oh God, Father, because of you we live and move and have our beings. We just thank you for another opportunity, oh God, to come to your house of worship. Thank you, Father, for another day. You have blessed us to see, oh God, with the breath of life. Lord, we don't want to ever take your goodness and your mercy for granted, but we're just grateful to you that you allow us to come together again for another Bible study. Thank you, oh God, for watching over, keeping us all during this day. Father, we just praise and we glorify your blessings and touch us each and every one of us. We look into your word. Father, you do have a purpose and a plan for each one of our lives, oh God. Father, we be active, that we will carry out the assignment, the mandate that's upon our life, that we be found busy carrying out what you have for us, oh God. Ask you to bless and keep us. Touch us each and every one, oh God, that we be a help, encouragement to one another. Father, that we be active in the gift and the calling that you have upon our life, oh God. Father, we be found ourselves busy in carrying out the assignment that you have for each one of us, oh God. Bless, oh God, the one that's uh, tuned in on tonight, the one that's here live, the one that's on their way, oh God. Even the one that will view this recording at a later time. Father, you do have a purpose and a plan for each one of our lives, and we just thank you, Father, for all that you continue to do in each one of us, our life, Father. Bless us, touch us, and keep us, oh God. Take us high in you. Father, we just desire a closer walk with you, oh God. Father, that you will touch us, oh God, we be led by your spirit. Father, that we carry out what you have for us, oh God. That we be a blessing, a help to one another, oh God, encouragement. Father, whatever our hands to do, that we do it. Unto you, Father, that we praise and give you thanks. Bless us, O God, the fathers of this week. Lord, have your mighty way. Just look for a high time in your name. Night during Bible study. And also, each time we come together, Father, we just look for a great move of your Holy Spirit. That you will move in the midst of us. And we just praise you and we thank you on tonight. Bless us and keep us, touch us, each and every one. Father, you see what we stand in need of, oh God. Father, we pray and lift up the sick, oh God. Father, we know you as a healer. Lord, you know every name that we have been calling. Father, speaking out to you, oh God. Lord, you are a healer. You are a cure. You are an antidote. You are an answer. You are our only option. And Lord, we just thank you, Father, because our help, our body, our mind, our, uh, all our being, it's in your hand. And Father, we just thank you and we just praise you and glorify. Increase our faith even more that we walk by faith and not by sight. Be pleasing all unto you. And Father, we'll be so careful to give you all the praise and all the honor and all the glory. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you on tonight. Truly, we just thank God for each of you that's here. Thank God for all of you that have joined us by social media. We are just excited and grateful and thankful that you join us on tonight. Amen. Our Wednesday night Bible study. Also our corporate fast day. Thank God for bringing us through. Amen. Another day of fasting. And we just desire a closer walk with God. We do want God's will to be done in each one of our lives. And we thank each of you on tonight that's here. Amen. We just give God all the praise, honor, and all the glory that the Lord is doing in our lives. And we, God, bless all of you for being here on tonight. Amen. At this time, as we always open up uh, testimony, so at this time, uh, anyone have a testimony like to share? Amen. The floor is open at this time. I know prayer changes things. I know prayer changes things. We should always pray and have more faith. Because I know prayer changes things. I know prayer 
changes things. I know prayer changes things. We should always pray and have more faith. Because I know prayer changes things. I thank and praise God for being here. I thank and praise God for life, for health, for strength. Because it all come from him. It wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for him. And I thank him for saving me, sanctifying me, filling me with his precious Holy Ghost. And I ask that all of us continue to pray. Continue to pray. Because we sure enough need to pray in these trying times. In these trying times. Because I tell you, I'm going to stay on the wall. I'm going to stay on the wall. Amen. 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 I just praise God for being here tonight. Thank God for his goodness and his mercy. Thank God for his love. Amen. Thank God for his kindness. Thank God, amen, for another Bible study. Amen. Glory to God. I just praise God for everyone here at Grace. Amen. It's our, and thank God for our pastor as I was, you know, just laying before the Lord, just thinking today. Everything that we need lies ahead of us. Nothing behind we need. Everything that we need lies ahead of us. So we got our eyes on Jesus. We got our eyes gazed upon the Lord. The Bible told us, amen, looking unto Jesus, the author and finish of our faith, amen. And that's why our eyes got to remain on Jesus, amen, in these trying times, in these tough times. Because these times is really crazy. I mean, really crazy. But if we keep our hope in Jesus Christ, we're going to be all right. Amen. God bless you all. Love you all with the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. thank God who is the head of my life. I want to thank him for waking me up this morning. I haven't been feeling so great lately, but every day that the Lord wakes me up is a blessing. And I want to um, thank him for, um, I share with you guys my, um, my, grand, my youngest granddaughter. She had um, a heart condition. It um, caused her to have a lack of oxygen to her brain for um, nine years. And that, um, that caused her to have some mental delays. And so um, it had been my prayer that the Lord would help her to process because that's her problem. She, she can't process things very well. And so she had this big exam. In her, she's in a veterinarian class. And she had this big exam. And she was so scared and nervous. She passed the mock test. And then when, when it came time to do the, um, the real test, my baby passed. My baby is a vet assistant, and she, she doesn't have to take the test again for another um, five years. So I, pr I praise God for allowing her brain to be able to process. And when I pray, I thank him for completing her healings because he, he brought her through the open heart surgery so he, he can heal her mind. He can heal her brain, and I just praise God. Amen. 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 Anyone else? Praise the Lord, church. Praise him. Amen. Glory to God. Thank God for another day. He's allowed us to see. Thank God for life, help, and strength. Thank God for our pastor. Amen. Thank God for our co-pastor. Uh, thank God for uh, all the members and the friends. I want to say bishop members and friends. That's real church. Uh, but all the uh, uh, members and friends, just thank God for God being God this morning. I um, got on up, got on up this morning, and man, I've been on a, a, little, a little coffee uh, journey, it's a little healthy coffee I've been using, and I'm telling you, this thing cooking, cleaning me out, amen, glory to God, but I got on up this morning, 
uh, before time, before prayer. And um, I had a dream about Jericho City, uh, the walls of Jericho. Come on, Jericho City. That's a church. But the walls of Jericho, I had a dream about them. And um, I said, Lord, okay, all right. Because I was just going to get up and just pray. And then I said, well, okay, let me look into it a little bit. And so I just, uh, you know, of course, it's a story heard, you know, church is all I know. Amen. Glory to God. But um, went back and I, I saw it just a little bit differently. And I just saw that, um, you know, that uh, we have the victory and all that we go to do, all that we go to say. Um, but even though the victory belongs to us, even as the victory belongs to us, we still have to claim it. We still have to uh, pursue it. And so thank God, um, because my mom has always got on to me about about confrontation, about confrontation. And so um, I believe there is a balance. Amen. Glory to God. But, I, but she's always told me, always let God fight, let God fight, let God fight. You don't have to fight in yourself. You don't have to uh, um, wrestle, not against flesh and blood. Amen, glory to God. The word just bubbled up out of you. But um, I, I, I truly thank God this morning um, because I saw it in the word. I saw it in the word. And the word simply said that we have the victory not through uh, fighting, not through physical altercation, not through any of that, but through our faith. We have the victory. And so I just thank God this morning that we have the victory and all that we go to do, despite what things look like, despite how things may seem or despite how things are. We still have the victory. You know, we still have the victory. So I just thank God this morning, excuse me, this evening um, that we have the victory and that God is still in the healing business. God is still uh, uh, a miracle worker. He's still doing all that he said he's going to do. And so I just thank God for that. Um, amen. Y'all pray my strength. As I continue to pursue uh, the the life that God has for me, Amen. Amen. Good evening, church. Uh, first of all, I just want to go on look ahead in my life to the Cleveland Wood Church. My co-pastor and Pastor Brown and co-pastor Brown. I just still stand before you now, just saying, uh, just glad to be in the house, of Lord, because I've been going through some things health wise, but. I do know that there's a God up there, and I do know that he's a healer, and I know he's the head of my life, and I know he's going to, he got me covered with it. Like I said, it's a tough month for our family right now. Like I said, you know, this is the month that my mom passed away, and, and, and it was a bit this June she did pass away on my sister's birthday. So I just want to thank the Lord for just being present, because there's a lot of people out there are in better, better shape off than I am. These, you know, these, I, I have a job, I can work, and I can get around, I can move, and I can do things with myself. But y'all know the strength, and I just say my strength in the Lord. Amen. Can anyone else? Amen. Our scripture shower. First Corinthians 2 and 5, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Oh, Lord, my God, in thee do I put my trust, Psalm 7 and 1. Anyone else scripture shower? Amen. God bless you. Thank God. Amen for the uh, testimony. Say we overcame by the blood of the lamb and by the words of the testimony. And thank God for a scripture shower on tonight. Thank God for each of you on tonight. Amen. We go right into our study. We're in the purple book. Amen. A biblical foundation for building strong uh, disciples. We are in chapter four. We're in chapter four. And we are in lesson three. Talking about spiritual gifts that we've been talking about. And we on uh, question number two. It says, what are the leadership gifts that God has placed in the church? And we're currently in the, in the book of Ephesians, uh, the fourth chapter, verses 11 through 12 uh, that, that we at. And so we've been talking about this. I want to read a scripture. Uh, and we're talking about gifts, talking about gifts, all right? And we're on uh, leadership gifts. But in 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy the fourth chapter, I want to open up with this scripture, 
and uh, we're going to go from there. First Timothy, the fourth chapter, verses 14 and 15. All right, First Timothy, the fourth chapter, verse 14 and 15. And it reads, neglect not the gift that is in thee. Y'all see that? Hello? Then it said, which was given thee by prophecy. It goes on to say, with the laying hands on uh, with the laying on of the hand of the presbytery. I say, meditate upon these things. Meditate. Give thyself wholly to them that thy profiting may appear to all. That's 1 Timothy, the fourth chapter, verses 14 and 15. All right? Uh, I was uh, in studying, read, and we talking about these gifts, right? We're on leadership gifts. Uh, and, and talking about gifts, you know how a person will go that loves you, you know, love you, and they go and buy a gift specifically for you. They go shopping for a gift for you because they love you and they don't look at the price of it because they want to get you something that just fit you, right? And they buy that gift for you, right? Uh, no, uh, the price is no problem. Don't look at it. So, and they get that. And they get the gift and wrap it up. Get up, get this gift. I mean, it's, it's personalized. They went it and picked it exactly. And sometimes more than one gift. Right, more than one gift. And they'll bring and give it to the recipient. They re get the gift. And out of all of this, that person done went through searching, finding, getting the gift, and give it to a person. And guess what they do? Guess what they do? They don't even open it. They don't even open it. Right? Don't, don't even open the gift. Out of all the trouble that they went through just to get you a gift, give it to you. And then also, also, the gift they, they gave you, right, the gift they selected for you, it even going to help and benefit others. But you know what happened, though? They just let it sit there. They'll never, never use it. And, and, and neglecting to use it to be a, a blessing or a help. All right, by you using that, you're going to help others. Do that sound, sound familiar? To happen? Anybody do it? Yes, sir. wanted to get him a car for graduation. So, you know, I'm looking around on the internet and I found him a car. I knew it probably wasn't what he wanted, but it was a car. You know, it was a good price. So I went down there, I looked at it. It was in great condition and everything. And I brought it back home. And when he came outside, you could, I could tell he was kind of thinking like, oh, wow, thanks, Dad. You know, so he, he took it, he drove it for a little while, then he stopped driving it, then he went out and bought his own truck. So I had to take the car, you know, and put it in the backyard, which I can't stand, but I had to, you know, until I got rid of it. But, you know, uh, it was a great running car. You know, it had a couple of things. I got them fixed. Great running car. It was a convertible and everything, but, uh, you know, he didn't want it. So he went and bought his own car. I don't understand why you go get a car payment when you got a good running car right there. But uh, it was a gift, you know, just like you said, a good gift that could have helped out, you know, um, if his his sisters that need a ride, you know, anything like that. But he didn't want that car. He went and got him a two-seat truck. And all we had to receive the gift. That's all. Because that person went out. In the same thing in the body. We are giving gifts and we just sit on it. 
when they utilize it. God gave us gifts, and we just sit, won't use it. This ain't what I want. But he knows exactly what we need. And, and, and when you're using the gift, it's going to benefit and help others. It's going to help others. But we won't, we won't, because this is not what I want. Uh, I'm not ready to open it up yet. Not ready to use it. But God has given it to us. A free. For us to be oper to operate in the body. And the same thing, uh, whether it's leadership gift or the other nine gifts that we're going to talk about once we get through Ephesians, or we've been talking about the leadership gift. We talk about uh, apostles and prophets uh, the last time that we discussed talking about uh, apostles, all right, sent forth out of uh, establishing churches, uh, the prophets, all right, mouthpiece of God, speak into people's lives, tell them something that, that God revealed to them or telling something that's going to happen in the future. And so the next one, uh, we get to evangelists, right? The next one is evangelists. And I want to read out of Acts 2, 21 and 8, right? So the next one is evangelists. So in your homework, all right, still in your homework, all right, on evangelists, uh, who want to talk on uh, we mentioned and been sharing who we may know, have known uh, for as the uh, leadership gifts. So we're talking on, on evangelists. So I'm going to read uh, one of the uh, evangelists that was uh, recognized in the uh, New Testament. Uh, what is an evangelist? What's the definition of evangelist? What is evangelist? Okay. Uh, Brother Jones say evangelist goes out and uh, spread the word of God. Okay, anyone else? But well, we're going to go to Acts 21 and 8, one of the uh, evangelists mentioned uh, in, the, in the scripture. All right, who, who, who are some evangelists that you may know, that you know, do know, have known? Go ahead. His pastor, I mean, his evangelist, well, he's going to be with the Lord now, but he lived in Atlanta. He would come to Columbus, to my hometown, every so often, and he would preach. And so that's what I think about events. He would come and just, as um, Brother Jones said, um, um, spread the word of God and stir the saints up, you know, get us stirred up so we can go back to our churches uh, and do, you know, do the work of God. Okay. All right. Anyone else? Uh, Elder Dern. He found the different churches to, you know, preach the word. Because um, the first person that just came to my mind, bless her heart, is he, um, I don't know if she was a missionary or evangelist, but Jones. Uh-huh, evangelist. She was an evangelist. Yeah. Because she's one that I know, and I've talked to her, she's went out several places, um, to preach and everything. So, I mean, she was the first one that came to me. Somebody, and I, I remember hearing one person um, talk about it, how they'll go up, they'll come in, and they'll preach, and they'll preach one of them hard messages, like just tear up the church, and then the pastor got to go put the heal the wounds. But they spoke the truth that hit a lot of people in the church that sometimes is not preached. Amen. And sometimes she also, speaking of, she also would prophesy. She would as well. All right? Anyone else? All right, uh, X, uh, Brother Thomas. Uh, just riding off of what Elder Duran was saying, it's pretty much usually the, the evangelist, usually uh, the evangelist is not necessarily tied down to a particular ministry. Um, they may be a part of it, but they do a lot of traveling um, from city to city, state to state, depending on the evangelist. Um, and then you also have televangelists um, that mainly work um, – you know, on the circus of uh, broadcasting, but uh, basically, uh, a lot like what Elder Darren was saying, evangelists are those who go out into the land. We're all really called to be evangelists, really, but those who uh, work in the office or carry that title, 
uh, traveling and uh, more so than what, what we were used to doing on Saturday mornings, knocking on doors or going to the grocery stores. It's just the, that, that person is kind of pretty much on the go all the time um, as, a, as an evangelist. And I remember uh, coming up, uh, it would just be this uh, evangelist. Her name was uh, Eunice Smith, kind of heavyset lady. She was a Caucasian lady. She would come and, and preach. Well, uh, and so she was the one I see, and you, um, and even when she did the altar call, I remember going up there. You see folk falling out. I mean, you go up there, she have a little, little bowl of oil. She uh, put a thing in there, tip the head. So I just see there falling out. And so, you know, uh, I went up there. I went up there. This first, this first time it ever happened, I went up there. She barely touched my head. I was in the floor. Just, just boom. You remember? Yeah. You, I, I mean, she, I mean, you, you be just, just fall out, right? And she would by every year come and run it, run a revival. And a lot of time, evangelists, that's that was their lifestyle, right? That, that was their lifestyle. I know one of the ones that I met. When I met my wife in uh, Columbus, he would come. He would stay in Memphis. He would come and uh, uh, run revivals. And he also had, had the gift of healing, all right? Lay hands on people here. He was another one, right? Lay hands on you, be, uh, folk be laying everywhere, laying the floor. He would prophesy as well. He would prophesy and he'd say, somebody here uh, having back pain. Won't nobody move. He said, don't have me to come to you and point you out. You start walking down the aisle. You start coming up. But he was evangelist. He also had the gift of healing, and he would prophesize. And so uh, you can see the work in their life, right? But you have a lot of evangelists that are travel, uh, that go around, that that's the livelihood that they're living. And I've seen that uh, coming up uh, as well. And so in Acts uh, 21 and 8, all right, it speaks of the evangelists that are named in the book of Acts uh, 21 and 8. And it said, and the next day, we that were of Paul's company departed and came unto Caesarea, and we entered into the house of Philip, the evangelist, which was one of the seven and abode with him. And also, a lot of times, the evangelist would go and establish churches as well, right? And then they'll appoint a pastor over that, and they, they would just travel, right? And then they'll go back. And, and check on it. And so uh, you have men and women coming up. I just, when I heard, thought about evangelism, I think about always a, a, a woman, right? But uh, you have both male and female. I mostly seen coming up. And then there was another, another Caucasian brother would come. His name was Parts or something, I think. He had a healing vent, uh, ministry would come and preach, right, uh, in our church coming up. And so, but a lot of the people here, about uh, carrying evangelist name, the title, and you don't see them going away doing that, right? Just kind of, I guess, I guess they're local. You, like, you can be a local evangelist, like yeah, but I'm just knowing, you know, the traveling out and, and, and uh, going out and preach. It's more than just you know being invited to preach, you know, but actually traveling and uh, establishing churches and uh, and actually working in that. Go ahead. When the evangelists back in the day, they used to like, run big tent revivals. Mm -hmm. I mean, just set, they would just set up a, 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 on a corner somewhere, an uh, open field, and that place would be filled. Souls would come in and be saved, delivered, rolling in the, in the grass, sawdust, whatever was out there. So I do remember that, too, with the evangelists. Yeah. And also, uh, one of the ones that used to come uh, when he was in Mississippi, he's still living today. Uh, he up in age. He just got originally ordained as a bishop. He was a pastor and evangelist, right? He's a pastor. And he, I mean, travel. He, he was hard to get, right? He would sometimes maybe preach a, a week revival, or he may preach Monday through Wednesday, then be back at his church on that Thursday, Friday, and Sunday, and then leave back out. But he was a uh, pastor and evangelist, right? And so. Sometimes you, that as well, right? That's a lot of traveling that they do, but uh, sometimes they, they be dual, right, for evangelists. All right, anyone else? You got something else? I, I had a question. So I was thinking about what Thomas said um, about them not affiliated with churches. 
they may not be a, affiliated with a church, depending on their travel schedule and however they go. But as a pastor, would you would know if a patient's a person's evangelist, do you send them out or people are invited? Because I even thought about what co-pastor just said about in the ba- back in the day, they did. They would just put up a tent and start preaching, and people just come. I mean, right. They would just come. It wasn't like no announcement or nothing. They would just be out there and start preaching. But you don't see any of that today. You, I mean, nothing. So how is one established as an evangelist? Sometimes they go to a town, right, and, and, and they'll put up a tent. Now, uh, I was looking, on, I was looking on, on, on Facebook, and so uh, this one church, I guess they're getting ready to start. They're meeting in the hotel where they're going to be meeting at on the hotel, uh, I guess, until they get, get a, 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 a building. Right, but normally they are under some type of ministry, right? And and I know one uh, person that came who's in Washington. He was traveling, and so uh, that's all he did. He he was under the domination, but he came traveling. You remember the couple? They, 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 he would travel, and so um, and they say I remember he he mentioned to me to, to uh, you know let the pastor know with. Well, he meant, told me that wasn't going to be no problem. He was saying what a, what a need was that we actually, it wasn't no price that he quoted. You know, for his folk now, they got honorary, they tell you, right? You'd be surprised some of the uh, uh, honorary gifts they, 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 they ask for, right? I mean, really. But anyway, so, but he, it was like he said, there's a need. This was like in the late 90s, he said there's a need. I think he said for $125. Those, you say they actually needed. And I went on and told Pastor, which I knew I had to do that. He was going to get that regardless. He was going to get that and some more, right? But um, now, when the bandits and so forth travel come, they tell you what the honorary is. Now, one person told us they don't have one, but they did want to know what we were going to get them. They did. Yeah, they, yeah, they did. They want to know. Say, I ain't got no honorary, but I do want to know what y'all going to get me before I come, right? And so then you have some that we had that there was none, right? And so we agreed upon what we give them, but it was one that um, told us, right? That uh, I need I need to know what you're gonna give me before I come here. I ain't got no amount, right? But but uh, but you have them, right? Normally they be done told you what they uh, honorary is, and and that all and, and that don't include right travel, right food and, and so forth. But uh, whoever we ever come come in, everything is is paid for. Right, everything's paid for, but uh, sometimes, but some evangelists that's their livelihood, right? That, that's that's all that they do, all right. And so, also, you look at uh, what turnaround they have, so they put forth some type of advertisement, you'll see them, right? Uh, and then I also know where a person would come to town to preach, let's say, for grace, and then they would call other pastors, right? See if they can come. And speak there as 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 other uh, ministry as well. I seen that happen too. You got something? Back in the day when people would um set them tent, you know they would come in evangelize. They weren't trying to start no church. Now today, I mean it, it whatever you know is you know a lot of times they trying to start churches, but they would just come in and I get um show the Lord would lay up on their heart. They come in these cities and then people would invite them to come too, and they'll do do the work of God. And they'll leave and go back to where they came from or go to another place. Yeah. Brother Tommy. That's what they supposed to do. Uh, Brother Tommy. I was going to say that... um, it is it's truly a blessing that grace and mercy um, understands what it is to be a blessing and to take care of those that you know, those people that they bring in. Um, but everybody's not like grace and mercy. All ministries aren't like that. Some ministries will bring you out, and the pastor can testify to this. I remember, I remember this as a little boy. We drove all the way to was it Homerville? You had to go preach. Um, Bishop had sent you. To go preach somewhere. No, that was uh, McCray. McCray, Georgia. 
McCray, Georgia, at the end, I'm, I'll never forget this. I wasn't playing the keyboard yet, um, but I remember my dad preached a mighty message. I mean, preached hard. And the people, it wasn't, it wasn't a lot of people in there. And, you know, I'll, I'll be honest about that. Um, I'm honest about all of it. It wasn't a lot of people in there. However, when we got done, they handed my dad $25. It, no, even then, I mean, you know, you know, and so it's, um, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of a push and pull. It's, it's, a, it's definitely a, a, a thin line, a sensitive subject, but, um, you know, you, you, you kind of, you, you can't put a price on, on, on going to do God's ministry, but you also can't put yourself in a bind or in a predicament where, you know, you know, they, they, People, people were saved, souls were saved, and God gonna take care of you at the end of the day. You know, God is definitely gonna step in. But um, one thing I have learned: you, you, you have to use wisdom. I, I can't, I can't, I can't. As as a as a minstrel um, and as a media consultant, I can't help everybody. I can't help everybody. I have to be very, very logical and very. Um, I have to hear the voice of God on where I minister, um, because everybody that has a church really isn't. A church, you, you understand what I'm saying? So, yeah, a, a call, call to the ministry. That, so that's one thing you have to be, uh, well, we, not leery of, leery of, yeah. And also, speaking of, of, of a love gift, sometimes we just give it back. I have even uh, been been the speaker, and I tell them ahead of time, I say, uh, uh, I don't want no love offering. Now, I don't do that every time, all right? But it is when... Place I preach, I just said, no, I, don't, I don't want to receive anything. And my wife have did the uh, same thing. You got something? Yeah, I was thinking about And then about uh, Mr. Buster, yeah. Uh, speaking on what Tom, uh, Brother Thomas was saying, you know, um, he, he right. And everything that he said, you know, when, you know, when you do those type of things, but one of the things he said that was spot on was you go there with no expectation. And, you know, because it, it, that's when you find yourself getting in your, in your flesh when you go there expecting something and they hand you $25. But the biggest thing is, is that you know for a fact whether they give you something or not, because it's a gift from God and you're doing his work, you're going to get that plus, you know, tenfold in the end. So, uh, you know, and in some ministries, they just can't. You know, like he said, it might have been like five or six people in there. You know, and they may be, they may not be able to, but whether they can or can't, the word still is necessary and needed uh, in that place, and God sent you there. So, you know, whether whether they give you something or not, um, you know, God gonna always, you know, give you what you deserve on on, on the other end. He's gonna bless you, you know, double on the other end. And like um, my wife was saying, she, back in the day, twenty five dollars was almost like a standard. You know, in some of the churches, you know, you go in there and you see you get fifty. That's because you don't, you know, your, your prophecies then then came true about five hundred times, and people coming from other churches. But you know, um, but the biggest thing is, you know, especially for me, I don't have an expectation for nothing when it comes to God's word. I feel like, you know, the blessings that that He done gave me already, I ain't doing nothing but paying it forward for, you know, what you know what He done done for me in my life. Amen. Go ahead. I was thinking about evangelist um, Melvin Smith. He's going to be with the Lord, too. But he, um, I thought about this elder, Dern said they were coming and they were hit hard. I mean, they were hit hard. And, you know, they ain't had to stay there <laughs> to heal up the hearts of the people. Pastor got to do that. But he would, um, he was, a, I mean, he was a dyma not dynamic um, evangelist. But um, he, back in those days, they had to sleep in their car. You ain't, they ain't putting them in a hotel. You better know somebody. Most, well, back in the day, you know, yeah, at the back of the church, uh, a member of the church would take you in. But I remember um, um, Evander Smith used to say that, you know, he, he had to sleep in their cars. And he was, I mean, he was a hard preacher. But anyway, they ended up killing him, though. Another member ended up killing him. Yeah, it, it, um, he didn't play. He did not play the radio. He, he was a strong preacher. But, um, you know, nevertheless, you know, he was a great preacher. But, you know, um, today, people to bring preachers in in this area. And preachers that we know, they would bring them here, and let, and then these people would preach their heart out, and guess who end up taking care of? We end up taking care of them because, I mean, 
<laughs> who they preach for, they gave them their check, and there's your check. But still, you got, you know, you still, uh, to me, if you brought them here, feed the people, please. They don't know the city like we know the city. But um, we end up, you know, taking care of them. Just out of the county, out of our heart, because we knew them. I brought you on. That is when, I, I think that is when the leadership kicks in. You know, I, I may bring Pastor Brown, and Pastor Brown said, well, I'm not looking for anything. Well, you know, that's, that's between me and you now. So if I don't give you nothing when you leave, I don't feel bad because you told me you didn't want it. Mm -hmm. But if you don't tell me that, and, and you're at my church, then my leadership should automatically tell me that I need to do the right thing. Amen. You got something here? How long ago, and um, a young lady, she's a great, a great singer. I mean, that girl song, 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 song. But she told him up front, um, you know, I, I just want to be a blessing to you. And so me and Frank got so tickled because they gave the, um, the people that host the service Gave the girl a cookie. I think I just want to gave you that. <laughs> but, I mean, it's, it's, I think, yeah, <laughs> she had this cute little cookie for her. They gave cookie. I think I just would, you know, I don't know. I think I, I would just have to give you some other than a cookie. Well, I know you said you don't want that, but I got this um, gift for you. And the gift was a cookie. I mean, we were just so They was, they was good with it. Amen. All right. So, Thomas. Praise him. Amen. Glory to God. Uh, for, my, um, for my birthday concert, I brought in a, um, well, I brought in, how many singers I brought in? Two? Two singers. Um, one guy lived in Atlanta. Another guy lived in in. in Indianapolis, um, and a uh, great gift, a great gift, um, and so reached out to his booking, because uh, now everybody very great and got booking agents and stuff like that, reached out to him, they told me exactly what it was going to cost um, for him to come, um, uh, because he would have to take time off from his job, you know, and he had a family, of, well, I can't remember how many children he had, he had a couple, quite a few, um, but he had to take off from his job to be here. And so and I, I believe I, I believe that there's a balance when you want someone to be here or you want uh, uh, someone's gift. You can't pay for the gift. You can't pay for the gift. But there, there should be uh, a medium where you can compensate them, you know, to a certain extent. Um, and, you know, just from my upbringing, uh, grace and mercy as well as my parents, when, when you bring somebody to town or when you do something for somebody, take care of them. So I put up, I put up a hotel for him and his brother. Uh, we took care of food, and but that's just I, that, that's just what we would, you know, you know that's you know then whatever spirit you want to operate in. And so, um, and I'm not saying this to my homer, but that you know just just on the, from our leadership that we received, I said, okay, well we're gonna we're not just gonna give you what you asked for. We also gonna take care of you. And then I believe we still blessed them even more. I know we did some extra stuff we did. outside of what Thomas did. Okay. That, you know, we, 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 we bless them. And that's just because grace and mercy come from good cloth. Cut from good cloth. Said that wrong. Uh, and, and good teaching. So, amen. Glory to God. And, and some of them they won't have before they even get there. Yeah. And then they won't uh, either when you pick them up at the hotel, you got to give them the honorary. Yeah. Before they even speak. Yeah. yeah, before they even speak, when you pick them up at the hotel, you give them the, I mean, at the airport, you give them the honorary right then. Yeah. So you have different things uh, that they request, right? E even with that, some of them request a certain flight, a certain seating. I'm talking about some we have their very detail in what they want during the whole time. Somebody else that's saying up, Sister Tracy.
his word to his people because an evangelist is one trying to bring people to Christ. You shouldn't be there looking for a dollar. And sometimes it bothers me when there are certain um, programs and they want you to pay $150 to hear the word. You know, I, I think that's so unfair. I mean, I do understand that everybody got to make a dollar some kind of way. But are you being pleasing to the Lord when you are requesting? I mean, sometimes I feel like you're robbing the people. You just you just robbing them. It's, it's just not fair to me. Okay. All right. Uh, next, Mr. Busby. I was I was gonna just just trade for you to it, but you know I, I I'm gonna speak for myself. Like what in a situation like Brother Thomas was saying, if you coming from Indiana, you know you you. You ain't just going to take off of work and pay on your own dime and come this far. But, you know, some of that stuff, I would feel, this just me, uncomfortable calling the church and saying, hey, grace and mercy. You know, you want, yeah, I'll come speak the word, but I need first class. I, all of that right there, to me, that's, 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 that you go, and then you're going to meet me at the airport, and, and when you get there, make sure you got my honorary. That, to me, that's that's way you know. I, I that's the first. I didn't know nothing about none of this stuff. So, I, like I just whispered that I, I'm getting ta I'm getting some teaching today because I never knew none of that. But to me, I would I, I wouldn't feel right in my spirit asking for, and I know I I done heard just in our in our in Bible study or something where somebody who said, you know, they got to have a special water and they got to have this and. You know, all of that kind of, that's extra, man. Look, at home, I drink, <laughs> look, if, Ty, if she drink bottled water, but me, if I, if it, I drink right out the, out the hose, I grew up with a kid sticking it in my mouth. Now I'm serving God and I need you to get me a $20 Perrier? Come on. I mean, to me, that's just, you know, it's overboard. Yeah, I, now I do ask for a certain uh, 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 brand of water. I do, I can get you know, but ain't ain't no twenty dollars a bottle that you know you're, you're paying. Now, also speaking of this, I remember once um, I forgot exactly what happened. Seemed like the speaker had to adjust a flight, which we paid for, but they uh, diverted a something they flight in order to attend something else, and he called and asked, "Could we pay the difference?" Because something he had to pay out of his pocket. This, 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 I mean, something he had. Something happened. I forgot what it was. Cause we had a, this flight. Everything is taken care of, but he did some addition after he left something, and he called and asked. Cause one of the uh, one of the members asked me, and so I we went on and did it. You know, you know. But I mean, I I got to think I I wouldn't have did that. I I I wouldn't have had the, the call and ask for you to make up because what they, it was something they diverted or something happened. This was this was like. About eight nine years ago, but anyway, but uh, you you be surprised, you be surprised, but um, the, you got some. Oh, go ahead. If you invite somebody to your house to eat, do you expect them to bring their own food? Now nowadays it is excessive when it comes to the requirements when people come to speak. Um, I remember that when we came back on this end from being, my husband being stationed um, in Tennessee and we would have, you know, different services and different things. And there was so many times that I wanted to invite people to come and speak. But me personally, I wouldn't because I already knew that the hospitality was going to be at an all-time low. Yeah, back then, $25 pretty much was a standard. But I wasn't going to embarrass myself and ask an evangelist to come all the way from Tennessee to Georgia and they get $25. Or, you know, they looking at me like, um, you put the hotel bill. You do this and you do that. So I never, you know, invited anybody because of that reason. But even if somebody comes and speak and they say, no, you know, I don't want it, you still offer it. Because by offering it, if they turn it down, you've done your due diligence by offering it. But if they say, you know, a, a cookie, that to me, that, that would have been a slap in the face. 
you know, even though she said she didn't want anything, but they still should have offered her, you know, a love offering and let her refuse it. And going back to um, the evangelist, um, Mother Mary evangelist, that she's going to be with the Lord, but the mother of the church, she would sit and tell us stories about how um, the Lord would just tell her out of the blue, go get on the Greyhound bus and go to this place and preach a revival. Yeah, or um, go to go to this place and preach, and she would be obedient. What if the Lord told her to get on the Greyhound bus? She would get on the Greyhound bus and just show up in another town or another city just to preach. And he, uh, he wouldn't even give her instructions. She would say that once she get done preaching, she would leave there and go to somebody's house. She didn't even know who they were, and knock on the door, and they would let her stay in their in their house. Amen. Go ahead. They would come to town. I mean, they would come to town and they would speak for maybe a night. That was forty five hundred dollars. Now only okay, forty five hundred dollars. You got to pay for them and who they got traveling with. Got to pay for their flight. Not two hotels, huh? two rooms. Then they had to have two rooms. That's a lot. That's a lot for one night. For one night. Now, me, myself, and I love all God precious people, and, and I love the Lord, too, and I don't want him to get my help either. But I just think, I, I think we got to revamp some stuff around here. Around here. I, think, I think we are doing, now this me in my mind, a, a, a little bit more, too much. That's just me. I just think that the Lord knows how much I love him, too. But I think, I mean, I think I, I, myself, this is just me. Everybody ain't got my mindset. Go do the will of the Lord. The people, God going to take care of you. If God is sending you, he going to take care of you. Now, like somebody said earlier, one person we, we brought here, she had a family. So, and she had a job. She come here, she missed those days off a job, so we got to take. Well, you got to accommodate that. You got to take care of people. But I think we putting too, as, you know, evangelists or whoever, I think we're putting too much out there. And we got we re, we need to re-examine what we're doing. That's just me, okay? So we won't get in trouble with the Lord. Amen. All right. So uh in their uh Acts 21 8, as I mentioned, uh talking about uh Philip, uh the the evangelist. All right, so go out to evangelize. And so um also I think somebody testified about where they had to go and ask could they preach, right? They would ask could they come there and preach. And so, um, but uh, going out and, and preaching, you know, uh, just go get, set up your tent, you know, go on the corner, start passing out tracts and, 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 and preach the word, right? But, uh, but evangelists, all right, is one of the uh, leadership gifts. And sometimes, as I mentioned, uh, we, I, know, I know pastors that's, that's also evangelists, they pastor and do a lot of traveling. And preaching as well. All right. Okay. Uh, in our question, we go to the next one. You're saying I can't come to your church because you can't afford me. But so that means that I'm not worthy of, of the word of God that you preach or your gift. I mean, I when I think about that, I'm thinking, how dare you think like that? I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm like you. Maybe I'm thinking wrong, but I, I, I do believe you should pay the person who's preaching. I do. I'm not going to say you shouldn't because, you know, that is some for some people, like you said, that's their full time job. That's mm -hmm. what God. But God has anointed him to do that. So he's going to he's going to make that way for them. But on the other hand, don't take it for granted. Because if you do an offering after you done preach and anointing is high, you didn't get nothing from me. Because I feel like you pimping me. And I could be wrong, but I, I, that's just something that bugs me. When you preach the word, just minister. Let it go on. Don't say the Lord said, okay, now if you got $100, give me $100. Come on up here and put it at the altar. You lost me. So, I mean, I don't know. I'm like you. We need to think about this thing. or We need to go back before the Lord and just say, Lord, what is your will for this word? Because you, you just told me. You, you know, we can't afford you. You don't want to come to us and preach to us. We got to listen to you on the internet. And, 
And sometimes uh, we have acts and they tell us what they honorary. We say, no, uh, thank you. They say, well, uh, well, we can, uh, is that too much? We can negotiate. They, they, they have said that, you know. And, and, and we're looking like, okay. But anyway, but yeah, you'd be surprised. Be surprised. When we, ask, when we have asked somebody to come to us, and they said their honorary was such and such, such and such, well, we listened to what they said, and then they said, well, you know, if you can't pay that, but because the Lord has blessed us, we give them what they ask for. So we did ask you to come, and we think about it the next time. We think, okay, so I already know how you is, so, you know, we got to deal with do. But I do know this, I'm going to say this here, when you bring, like, a bishop in the city, he will pay he will pay. Now, that's like $5,000 right there on the spot because he's a bishop. Now, every denomination may not do that, but some denominations do that. Yeah, but some, some of the uh, denominations, right, um, they already know what, what, what got to be given. Because they all part of that denomination, right? And so, but when you when when you invite someone from that denomination, then they're gonna tell you what the honorary is, right? And so, uh, some that come, they say they don't have one, right? And and they say whatever you give us, we didn't we didn't we ain't coming for that. And so, uh, one, one speaker she mentioned. And and so she 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 said that they told her you don't know how to lift an offer. They told her you don't know how to lift an offer. Yeah, they say you you, you don't know how to lift. You don't know how to lift an offer. She said that that ain't what I'm there for. I'm there to preach the word, right? But they expect and some would tell them that that come tell them what they want them to lift. They tell them. Some are given directions that once you finish preaching, you will lift an offer. Some have given, some places you go, they already been told them, instructed them what for them to do after they have delivered. Or either they also will actually lift the offering when they come as well. And so, um, it's a lot, lot going involved. All right. The next, yes, ma'am. Oh, yeah. are already engaged and it's like it's like a drawn out service because they're waiting for you to give and I'm just like that is so out of order so out of order it's like you yeah it's like you gonna give this <laughs> because they, they're waiting for you to give and you're like okay well we already gave we we was at uh, uh we went we was at a place and it probably 50, 50 folks there maybe, no more than 75, no more than 75. They said, we're we, we raising $10,000 today. It wasn't, wasn't even 50, was it? it? Wasn't even 50. But they got it. They got, I think, they went over 10, they got $12,000. Yeah, it was over 10. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 but but that wasn't, I wasn't surprised, it wasn't unusual for that nomination. Yeah, that's what they do. That, that wasn't unusual for that nomination. They said 10,000, I think it was 12, 12 that they raised. All right, Thomas, then we're going to close. Okay, praise the Lord, everybody. Um, now, with that, though, um, not, not excusing or, 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 or trying to fight on their behalf, a lot of those people that were there were of the same denomination. denomination. Yeah, they was all and, denomination. And the same organization. Yeah. So some people come together and say, hey, if this is going to be the chief apostle here, this and that, some people do set their ministries up like that. Um, but that was not just a general service. No, it wasn't a general you, service. You, you, had, you had some people that came to support. So that, that's why it kind of looked like that. Amen. Uh, so, um, but I do, I, I do want to say this. I thank God for pastor and, and co-pastor because... They have always they've always said this, um, and I've always I've always saw this. You don't bring nobody nowhere. You ain't got the money already. 
don't set up a service. Do not, don't inquire about it. Don't even, I mean, if you go ask them, hey, you know, I, I feel led for you to come here. Um, we would love to see what's your availability. Bam, bam. And in the, in the, in, in, in this may not sound the best, but in the negotiations of things, you, you, you understand, you know, what, what they may be asking for. You don't put them on the plane until you have that money. And that's, and that's just order, and that's just, and, and like Minister Buskey was saying, that's working in the spirit of excellence through hospitality. You, you, don't, you don't bring nobody halfway across the country, and you ain't got their money. Yeah. And, and, and everything that we have planned is already paid for. Yeah. If we don't raise but one dollar, right, the rest of us in the red. Yeah. But that wasn't the purpose of our service, was, to, was a fundraiser, right? It's for ministry. And so the majority of the time, we're in the red before we bring somebody in. We don't raise the cover, which we know that from the beginning. That's not the intent, right? So when we bring somebody in and we already agreed upon and so forth, right? And so they are, it's everything already taken care of. Just lift that one off. Go ahead. I was about to say, Precious, boy, they, they was up in age, right? They, 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 they. We went to this service and um, we didn't gave in this offering gave there and so now they come to take another offering and, and um, Minister Buskey that offering that thing was so long I mean it just went on and on Pressure was this young girl and Pressure had two dollars and she thought that they were begging that for her two dollars I mean the, the, she in her little mind Paul y'all said so she thought the two dollars I got I need to get these people at least one of them we already gave offer now but they went on so long so drawn out we don't want to do that. We don't want to do. We don't want to do that in church. I don't think. I know God didn't call us to do that. Whatever the people give, get it and go, do what you got to do. But all this long drawn out, no. And and another thing, this just me. This is me. If you're gonna ask me to be your speaker, you already asked the people that, especially people I brought with with me. They already gave that offering. Now we're gonna come up and take a, a speaker's offering. I said, excuse me. Don't worry about no offering. Don't worry about no offering. Because my people, and the, and the majority of the people in the house is my people. And they already done gave. And then you want to take up a speaker offering. No. I said, excuse me. Wait, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I don't need an offering. Amen. Your Lord had praise. We'll have Minister Ann Buskey to close us out. Uh, the announcements. We will be serving dinner after church and directions. Directions are in the bulletin. It's um, 1005 Franklin Street. Um, and we'll be leaving the church at what time, Pastor? Uh, probably 3. 3 o'clock. All right. We'll be heading out at 3 o'clock. Everybody can see. Yes, at 4. Yeah. Yeah, 3 o'clock. Okay. There will be a brief meeting with the VBS teachers and support staff on April 20th on April 20th. This meeting will be in the fellowship hall immediately following men's and women's fellowship at 11.30. A um, April 28th, the youth will support Autism Awareness Month. Please wear attire that shows your support for autism. And you want to speak about Children's Church Fresh? It's not in the bulletin. Okay, it will be third Sunday registration. How you, we, we're gonna register. Okay, youth service. Um, youth, youth service. Youth, children church begins on the third Sunday. So, ages three to ten, April twenty first, ages three to ten, um, and registration will be prior to service or prior to going to children church, or going to children church. But registration can be done early. Are you gonna have it for this Sunday? Okay. All right. Um, no minister. Yeah, no training. No this training Sunday. this Sunday either. That's the announcement. All right, Amen. All right. Uh, oh, one more. Yeah, um, go ahead. we're wearing all white for Pentecostal Sunday, May nineteenth. All white, everybody, men and women. And we're also planning uh, baptism uh, that Sunday as well, right here, at Grace. Yeah. 
And this uh, uh, we're confirming it that second Sunday it should be in by then. Go ahead. And this Sunday is the first men's service. No, third Sunday. Third Sunday. Yeah, this oh. is women's Sunday. This Sunday. Oh, no, that's right. I done got excited. Y'all say I got excited about the men's service. Amen. Thank, thank you, thank you. Yes, <laughs> we excited about Father's Day too. <laughs> when is that? Ooh, that's first. Amen. Uh, prayer requests have uh, Miss Barbara Mormon or uh, healing. Uh, Minister Patricia Brown have procedure on Friday. Uh, Mother Hollins a uh, healing. Mother Barbara Dern healing. In salvation. Brother Steve, Sister uh, Tracy Parker, and also uh, Minister Carter is not here. There, she'll get her testimony uh, on Sunday. She told me I could share it, but I ain't gonna share. It. I'm gonna let them do it. But they are uh, waiting on the on on their. Uh, Complete process of they test should testify about about it. So that's where they are at tonight. They're in the middle of a completing assignment, huh? And bereavement. Also, uh, Minister Carter, aunt, uh, pray for her mother, her only sister. And Minister Johnson, best friend, mama died. Sister Norris. Any other prayer, any prayer requests online? So this second Sunday, a uh, women's Sunday. Amen. Amen. We're standing. shall be in the midst. And Father God, we just ask right now in the mighty name of Jesus, O oh Lord God, for healing, Lord God, restoration, O oh Lord God, peace, O oh Lord God, salvation. Lord God, we just ask right now, Lord God, that you will provide your peace. Lord God, your peace, Lord God, that surpasses all understanding. Father God, we call Sister Barbara Mormon out before you. Father God, we call Patricia Brown out before you on tonight. Mother Holland, Barbara Duran, Lord God, Annie Gore, Lord God, for healing and salvation. Brother Steve, Sister Tracy Parker, Minister Carter. Father God, we um, also call out um, Minister Johnson, her best friend, um, mother that um, has passed, Sister Norris. Father God, I call out my co-worker, Lord God, Mr. Johnny, Lord God, his wife that's Lord God, has been taken off a ventilator and is now in hospice, God. Father God, we know that you're able to work a miracle, Lord God. God, we know there's nothing too hard for you, Lord God. Father God, we also ask for healing for Walter Cheeks, Lord God. Father God, we know you to be a God that sits high and look low, Lord God. Father God, you know just what we stand in need of before we even ask, oh Lord God. And Father God, every name, oh Lord God, that I have called out before you on tonight, Lord God. Father God, I ask right now, Lord God, that you heal, deliver, and set free. Lord God, provide your peace, oh Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, we know that you're able to do all things except fail. God, we know there is nothing too hard for you, Lord God. And Father God, we just lift these souls up before you on tonight, Lord God. Father God, meet them where they're at in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, salvation, Lord God. Father God, cause them to cry out to you and ask what must I do to be saved, O oh Lord God. Father God, we know you to be a healer and a deliverer, O oh Lord God. Father God, save the unsaved in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, we just ask right now, Lord God. Lord God, as we pray, Lord God. 
on tonight, Lord Jesus. We leave, Lord God, not one stone unturned, Lord God. But, Father God, we ask right now that you meet every need. Lord God, touch the absent part, Lord God, of the body. In the mighty name of Jesus, wherever they're at on tonight, Lord God. Father God, we send you to them on tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. And, Father God, we just ask right now, Lord God, Lord God, as we prepare to leave this place, Lord God, Father God, we ask right now in the mighty name of Jesus, oh, Lord God, that you would just continue to go before us and continue to carry us through the rest of this week, Lord God. Hide us behind your cross, God. God, a shield that cannot be penetrated by the enemy, oh, Lord God. Father God, we just thank you right now in the mighty name of Jesus, oh, Lord God, for you guiding us, leading, and keeping us. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray, amen.